So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is ATG's Midwest University Speaker Series. Uh, it's my pleasure to present uh, Mark and Bob. I'll do a brief introduction and allow them uh, to add anything additional that they have about themselves, and then just jump right in to why we're here. We're here to learn about uh, Digital Twin and uh, Tandem as well. So first we have uh, Bob Ray. Bob has been with Autodesk for 23 years. He's the general manager for Autodesk Tandem. And his mission really is to transform the built asset lifecycle with digital twin technology and solutions. So connecting data to the digital twin will provide clarity, enabling both owners and operators to improve their operation efficiency. And isn't that truly what we're all about is just becoming more efficient in what we do. So I'm excited to hear more about what this technology can do. It's, it's very new and I feel like we're gonna be hearing a lot more about it. So I appreciate everyone uh, joining us today. Uh, Mark, Mark has been, uh, or Mark was a longtime customer and friend of ATG. And we were actually just discussing yesterday that it was two years ago that uh, Mark made his debut on the Midwest University stage as an Autodesk employee. So this is a very was a very exciting transition and still it's my pleasure to continue to work with Mark while he's at Autodesk. So uh, Mark is in his 25th year in the industry. Uh, he works with customers on the integration of BIM 360 Ops, developing case studies with uh, Autodesk customers, uh, speaking at industry events such as this, uh, AU, built, the list goes on. He even works as an adjunct professor at ASU. So he's kind of a big deal. And I think everyone who's uh, on the call right here knows that he's pretty famous. So um, big shoes to fill today, Mark. He's extremely, both Mark and Bob are really passionate about what they do and their ability to uh, share share what they're, what they're learning. So in the past, uh, how, how was that? Did, it, did it, I need to add anything? So no, I think you. That, way, that was a great setup, right? I think you way overdid it. So, but yeah, it, you know, it was two years ago. Um, it, you know, we were talking about Arkansas Children's Northwest at at Midwest University. You know, because that had been in operation about a year. Which ATG, and, you know, Bernhard Navholtz, we all worked together to deliver that project. You know, and so. That was a unique project, was it not, Emily? I mean, we did a yeah. lot of different things up there. You know, we delivered BIM 360 ops like 92 days before they ever saw a patient at that Greenfield Hospital. But didn't it, this is kind of going to be the next evolution, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I think that's what the main question I had is, you know, what you did at Children's Hospital, how is that different from, you know, moving forward with a digital twin? You know, what... I think that's going to be a kind of a, a reoccurring question is what's the difference between ops and a digital twin twin and, and tandem? Well, we've, we've got the expert to talk about that for sure. But what I'm going to add just a little bit before that. So on Children's Northwest, we focused on maintenance and we focused on the data for maintenance needs. And that's where we looked at. That's what we did. We actually specified the facilities data in the architectural specs that were issued, in the MEP specs that were issued. So we took that long-term approach to look at the operational efficiency, and, but we focused on maintenance. And what, what Bob is really gonna talk about is the operational efficiency, how we connect all that. So it is the next evolution of what you've heard, what a lot of these people on the call have heard me talk about with Arkansas Children's Northwest. This is where, where Autodesk is expanding, going to Autodesk Tandem. Bob has a tremendous passion about this. But what we want to find out first is who everybody is on the call. So we're going to launch a little poll. And let's see, are you seeing the poll on the screen? Yep. So if you could answer that poll, we'd like to know who you are and what's going on. Is, is it working? Yeah, it's it's up. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. All right. So Kathleen, Bob is going to be defining digital twin here in just a moment. And are there any recommendations for a great extraction add-ins for third-party programs for Revit to get 
MEPL of appointment cloud scan. We'll tackle that, Justin, here in just a little bit. All right, so data's coming in here. Looks like we've got a nice mix of individuals. It's um, So we've got 10% building owners, 12% construction, 25% engineers, 25% architects, about 18% software facility owners going up, Bob. So we got a nice mix of, of people in here, here today. All right, so um, Bob, I'm gonna hand it to you, let you show what we're doing with Autodesk Tano. Thanks, Mark, thanks, uh, Emily. Share my screen. I'm gonna do a couple of things. I will uh, share a presentation, and at the same time, I will break out into demo a couple of times through the course of that presentation. So um, <clears throat> let me start by saying that, you know, we, we really started this project at Autodesk about a year, a little over a year ago, uh, February of 2020. Conversations around this project started, I would say, in the fall of 2019. And, and really, it was conversations at the executive level at Autodesk. You know, what, what is our role in this ecosystem of digital twins? And I'll get to a definition in just a minute. As I did some background research in this space, there was a, a couple of things uh, that became very evident to me. Uh, one is, uh, you know, a year and a bit ago, if you asked 10 people what a digital twin was, you would easily get 10 different answers uh, to that question. Um, the other thing that was very true is that if you can find a digital twin out there in in reality, um, they are composed of a lot of data collection, post-project handover, a lot of duct tape and bubble gum gluing systems together to kind of create this digital twin, typically a very bespoke process uh, and a very brittle solution at the end of the day. Um, the other thing that was evident to me is that a lot of that data that goes into that digital twin, that foundational data, is data that is either created during design, captured during construction. So Tandem was born out of the realization that can we harness all of that information and, and create a repeatable process to deliver a digital twin through a digital handover process? And it goes back to what the industry has talked about for 10 plus years with BIM, start with the end in mind. How do we build a process and a set of tools to start with the end in mind and actually deliver that digital outcome that can uh, then be connected into operational systems and, and turn into a true digital twin. So let me dive into a definition because I, I know uh, there's been some questions about that. For Autodesk, a, a digital twin is really uh, a dynamic uh, a digital replica of a physical facility or asset. Um, it needs to connect to, to have a bi-directional connection to uh, the physical entity in order to have that operational awareness necessary to simulate, predict, and inform decisions based on real world conditions. This bi-directional connection between the digital and the physical is what makes a digital twin a powerful capability and a, and a powerful tool. Um, without that bi-directional connection, you just have a model. Um, it's important that, that that digital artifact is connected to the operational behavior of that true physical facility. More importantly for me is really the opportunity a digital twin provides in terms of transforming the built asset lifecycle. And what I mean by that is really through the plan design build lifecycle, tracking that digital thread of information for every asset from the time it's designed to the day it's decommissioned, understanding that owner's requirements, capturing all of that data and handing over to that owner that digital artifact in addition to the traditional handover documents. That digital artifact acts as an index into all of those documents, but also acts as a powerful tool that can be connected to operational systems from maintenance management solutions like ops, to traditional CMMS systems like Maximo, to IoT systems, to space planning systems. And what you really are doing through the phase of the asset lifecycle, the asset management lifecycle, is collecting a lot of knowledge about the performance and operation of that asset. You're building up knowledge. That knowledge then provides data to inform future planning life cycles. The important aspect here is, you know, that could be anything from understanding you know, the sustainability uh, 
outcomes that you are targeting and, and where you're actually tracking against those sustainability outcomes. That could be things like mean time between failure for particular pieces of equipment. It could simply be material um, behavior and, and how that material is performing, floor tile, other types of material that you've used. And, and then using that data to inform future decisions around that plan design build life cycle to get the most ROI out of your assets at the end of the day. Uh, Vernantix published this digital twin maturity model in a paper last June, and, and I have used it ever since I saw it because I, I really like it. And, and their maturity model really starts with this notion of a descriptive twin. And this is that idea of starting with the end in mind. That descriptive twin is basically a definition of the assets, the spaces, the systems that the owner needs to manage in that facility. Being able to capture that data, have that descriptive model is a key element for any digital twin. Building on that is the idea of informative and predictive twins. An informative twin basically has those operational connections to understand real-time performance or you know, where the work orders are being applied to which assets. Predictive starts to take history into account and, and be able to analyze history to do things like predictive maintenance and, and, and predictive analytics. They build on that the notion of comprehensive and autonomous twins. Uh, comprehensive starting to add what if scenarios and, and, and what if types of, of questions and simulation for those what if questions. And then autonomous, as its name applies, is basically the ability for that twin to be, act on behalf of occupants or tune that facility if it's a processing plant based on operational characteristics. The business value clearly goes up as we move from left to right. But I will also say the level of digital transformation required both in the owner ecosystem and in the AEC community to deliver these projects is going up. You need to be digitally mature in order to get to the end game. And it's very difficult to skip steps in this process. I think one of the challenges we see in the industry today, and it's a historical challenge, is owners, of course, receive that um, handover package, which includes a lot of analog documents. Maybe there's some Revit models in there. If so, most owners don't know how to spell Revit. They don't know how to take advantage of that data that's locked away in those files. So how do we give them a digital deliverable that will index all of that data and give them that descriptive twin that they can use to basically connect to their operational systems and really take advantage of this digital twin ecosystem in a repeatable way? With Tandem, the intent is to allow projects to start digital, stay digital, and, and really deliver digital. We're doing that um, in a couple of ways. We start with this notion of digital handover, and our first workflow target is digital handover. And that's really providing our customers with a set of tools to harness all of that data collected in the BIM process to make a digital twin a highly repeatable natural output of the project lifecycle. We do that in a couple of steps. First of all is this notion of specifying data requirements and operational outcomes. This is the idea of beginning with the end in mind in the BIM journey, uh, codifying uh, your assets and space organization, uh, what assets and space types need to be managed for that particular facility type, uh, what data is required for each of those asset and space types, and, and even right down to what are the target outcomes that could be sustainability metrics for the whole facility that could be mean time between failure for particular components but codifying those things so that you can track and measure against it later is important we capture all of this into a concept in tandem we call a facility template which allows you to specify those data requirements and i'm going to break the demo for a second and show what a facility template looks like in tandem today so a facility template is really three components. Uh, it starts with the notion of your classification or your asset breakdown structure. Um, that could be based on an industry standard, uh, like in the US commonly used master format. It could be uh, uniformat. Uh, it could be in Europe, it might be um, uniclass or omniclass. Or if you're an owner and you're already using a particular system or have a breakdown structure you like to use in your CMS system, you can define your own breakdown structure that has you know, some simple categories uh, with some subtypes. 
it is entirely flexible in terms of how you want to define this classification scheme. Typically what we see is, you know, using master format for the spec or uniformat, and then uh, breaking that down and simplifying that to the asset types that at that point are really cares about tracking and managing. <clears throat> Second step in defining your facility template is setting up uh, a set of parameter sets. Now those parameter sets could come from industry standards and we'll provide industry standards out of the box with TNM when we release like COBE standards or IFC standards. Each one of these examples contains a set of parameters for that particular type of item. If we look at one of these, you'll see that this pump example has from COBE has current voltage, frequency, all the kind of data that you would typically track for a pump. And this is basically based on the COBE standard. You can also define your own and you can use those to as a starting point, or you can define your own. And the example I'm going to show you, uh, every root node or every asset has some basic identity data to it, which is captured in this asset identity parameter set. These are like blocks they build up, and you'll see that as I go into the template itself. But every asset in this model has manufacturer model number, serial number, install date, uh, warranty information, OEM manual, that type of thing, product data sheet. And then you'll see others like automatic entrances or uh, the hydronic pump contain additional information that builds on that basic identity data. And collectively, the classification system and the parameter sets come together in a facility template. So a template defines, first and foremost, the classification system to be used by that particular template. In this case, it's the LTU specs. Uh, classification system, and then how those parameter sets map into those various classifications. And this is additive. So your all assets, every asset in the model contains this asset identity data. Uh, if we go down into heating ventilation, you will see if I can find the right place. I don't know where it is. Um, let me take this fire extinguisher example instead. So, you know, a fire extinguisher has this data on top of the basic asset identity data. And you can have multiple parameter sets assigned to an asset group. So I can assign multiple parameter sets to a particular asset type so that they build up in blocks. I will show you how that applies to an asset in just a moment. Let's go back. To this. Bob, we asked while you're while you're setting that up here, we asked the question. You know, how relevant are standards like Kobe for turnover IFC and ISO? About 40% said very, 45% said to some extent, and then 16% said not at all. So, and, and I'll say that, Mark, that, that pretty much aligns with many of the conversations we've had with customers over time. Are, you know, and that, that lower percentage is probably existing facilities that have existing asset structures that, that just want to use the scheme they already have in place. And that is very common. Um, we do see a lot of the industry moving into the standards though and, and moving closer to standards. And I think that's a good thing over time. I would agree. I would definitely agree. The next step in the tandem workflow today or in the digital handover workflow is what we call capture and verify. Uh, today, tandem data is sourced from Revit. We do work directly with uh, other Autodesk collaboration tools like Autodesk BIM Collaborate and Autodesk Docs for sourcing that information. Um, and we're planning a connection with Autodesk Build, which is our field construction tools. And, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But the way this works is in working with these tools, what we want to do now that we have that facility template, that documentation, that, that asset uh, structure well-defined, we want to be able to capture that design and engineering intent from Revit, be able to pull that in, map that data from Revit into the asset structure uh, that the owner cares about, and, and do that over time through the project uh, lifecycle. And then secondly, as you move into construction, obviously being able to push those uh, those templates of, of parameter sets out into uh, our field collection tool like Autodesk Build and basically capture that as built installation and commissioning data right in the field as you're executing the project, installing that equipment, commissioning that equipment, capturing that in real time, 
bringing that back into the tandem model. And then finally, providing tools to really verify the completeness and accuracy of that asset and space information. What data am I missing? What data is there? Which asset types aren't fully defined yet? Being able to have a report and a set of dashboards around tracking progress is very important. And also tools to verify completeness and accuracy is very important. You can think of this almost like a mini codified BIM execution plan for that digital handover data. Inside of Tandem, there is this notion of an asset information model that is defined through that facility template scheme. And the way this information model works is, of course, a facility contains a set of assets, contains a set of spaces. Assets can be things like anything from simple like light fixtures to doors to more complex uh, items like pumps. Um, spaces can be things like rooms or uh, clearance zones around pieces of equipment. And these two are connected through systems. In tandem, we infer the relationships between these systems relatively well so that you do not have to have a fully accurate design to, to, to basically have the full map model. We can actually infer and build these relationships on the fly inside of tandem, which helps not have to have that perfect BIM model every time. Um, let me talk about how we collect this information in tandem for just a minute. So if I pop back to tandem, uh, I'll look at a facility that was built around this dorm template, uh, the East Residence Hall, uh, I'll open that. And this is a real project. The actual uh, facility template for this was built based on the, the spec document um, that was created and, and, and ripped with pipe and processed with a tool called pipe. Um, the uh, facility comes up, uh, every facility in tandem today starts really with a collection of, of files, Revit models in this particular case. The Revit models can come in either by direct import or they can live inside of Autodesk Docs or BIM 360 and basically be brought in. What's important to note is that uh, if you bring a model in the first time, we'll bring that model in in its, in its complete form. If you upload a new version, we'll only bring in the changed elements in that second version of that model. So if there's only five elements that have been changed, you'll only see five changes inside of Tandem and we track all of that change. So you can see it, I'll show that in just a minute. Second step, once you've got your Revit models in, is to basically specify which facility template that you are using with that model. As a part of that facility template specification, you can also say, I, I wanna define exactly which properties I'm gonna map from Revit parameters into the asset definition inside of Tandem. So I can go down and specify like manufacturer, for example, is coming straight across from the manufacturer parameter inside of Revit. It's important to map that data so that you're not duplicating data entry. You basically take advantage of any parameters that you're capturing in the Revit design process. Um, and then from there, you can start to uh, interrogate this facility in a number of different ways. Uh, you can look at specific floors, you can look at specific systems uh, like uh, piping, for example, and you'll get a filtered list of, of just those assets that are part of uh, the, the piping system. You can do that by Revit category, by Revit family, by any of the Revit type data. It's all kind of there. If I drill into an example of how that asset data is represented, uh, I'll use this bookmark here and I will pop into the mechanical room. You can create as many of these bookmarks as you want. The bookmark really is a representation of the filters that you have applied and all of those objects or assets that are part of that filter. So um, if I pick on this particular pump, you'll note that there is some property data here. These are the asset properties defined in the template for this asset type. So the asset type is a hydronic pump. By, by its classification. It therefore inherits the asset identity data and the hydronic pump uh, parameter set. You'll note that this data is all live and editable inside of Tandem. I can actually go in and I can edit this data here if I want. Um, if it's mapped over from Revit, we can override that mapping from Revit by, by typing a value. Um, the other thing you'll note is there can be hyperlinks in these parameter sets. So I can go straight from this hydronic pump 
straight to the product data sheet. This is again starting to build an index of all of that uh, typical handover documentation and tying it to the digital asset. Uh, back into Tandem for a moment. The other thing that you'll note on every asset in Tandem is not only are the asset properties that are there, but you'll notice there's a category called design properties here. This is basically all of the element and the type data uh, imported from Reddit. So we capture all of that information. We bring it into the twin in a read-only form. We don't let you modify the Revit element data. And this again prevents kind of it, two sources of truth between Revit and Tandem. Uh, there's also, uh, I won't demo this today, but there is a Revit plugin that allows you to edit Tandem parameter sets directly back in Revit and, and basically keep that association so you can do that as well. Um, a couple of other things that I'll talk about quickly. Uh, I mentioned history and asset history. You can see asset history in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is on an individual asset. You can see the history of all edits made to this asset over time. You'll see all the previous values in here as well that were made over time. Uh, and you can look at this on a per asset basis, or if you're looking at something like uh, let me switch views for a moment and go to lighting. I can look at the history of all of the changes to lighting over time. Uh, I can see that I, I made a change uh, here. Um, and I can zoom and go straight to that particular change. Now, that wasn't the lighting change. This is history of all models. If I want to uh, go back to that lighting example, then I can also say use my filters and show only the changes on those that's basically applied to this filter, or I can filter by date range and my change history. So I have pretty granular access to my change history across the entire model. The other thing you'll note that we have is an inventory. So this, this acts as a almost a spreadsheet-like view for manipulating all of your asset data on any of the currently filtered assets. So I can come in here and I can change a value like this one, and I can you know, either edit them individually or I can copy that column to all the rows. It's very easy for me to do that. I can also export this to Excel, give it to a sub, have them fill it in. I can bring it back into tandem. Again, when you bring that data back, we track all those changes. So there's a couple of different ways to manipulate and work with the data inside the tandem model today. That I'll pop back to slides. Um, with digital handover, we're really trying to achieve two things. Uh, first and foremost, the idea that we can create a better, transparent, more collaborative environment between the owner and his project team around delivering those outcomes the owner needs to have to basically use that digital artifact going forward. Secondly, you know, the idea that we can deliver this digital artifact that indexes all of that handover documentation is a valuable tool for the owner to both accelerate operational readiness, but also then take that digital model, that descriptive twin, and connect it into operational systems, maintenance management, IoT, et cetera, as you go forward. Now, moving into future roadmap a little bit, what I've talked about so far is kind of our current direction with the beta and, and where we're going, but it really didn't talk about, you know, connectivity to operational systems or any of the things that, that make a true digital twin in terms of, you know, a connected or a predictive twin. And, and where we're going with this is what we really want to do is provide, use that tandem model, that digital replica or that, uh, that descriptive plan to infer and provide context for the relationships between asset spaces and systems and start to answer and visualize complex questions like, if this component fails, what spaces are affected? Or how is the built asset actually performing against my desired outcomes? And looking at this, not only just at an individual facility level, but if you have a portfolio of data centers that use the same template, looking across that portfolio of facilities and understanding how they perform as a collective. Um, we'll do this really by connecting the tandem model to an IoT platform. And this is really an IoT platform of choice. Autodesk is not going to build an IoT platform. We will partner with our 
our preferred infrastructure vendors like Microsoft Azure, uh, AWS, uh, IBM, they're really investing heavily in IoT, device connectivity, all those kinds of things. We wanna take advantage of that and link to those platforms. Um, that link to those platforms and, and also capturing operational data like maintenance management data or leasing and tenant data and, and connecting that to the model really gives us this idea of having a single pane of glass for uh, interrogating and operating that facility because it takes those silos that an owner typically has, those data silos, and brings them together to give you a unified view of your facility, its operational performance, and its current uh, kind of maintenance characteristics. Moving beyond this notion of connecting and accessing, and kind of starting to move up that maturity model a little bit further, we get to the idea of having predictive analytics. Again, leaning on all of that operational data you're collecting over time gives you the ability to analyze either a single facility or data across that portfolio of facilities to really predict and, and make better decisions based on the operating characteristics of that facility. Grand vision for Tandem over time, focused right now on digital handover and moving into this notion of smarter operations, that single pane of glass, if you will, with that model as a contextual framework, and then moving from there into analytics and insight. Yeah. Our roadmap is really structured around this digital twin maturity model, and it's very intentionally structured around it. We believe that repeatability is key to making this a a process that is effective. And so our near-term focus is all around that descriptive twin and creating a set of workflows to produce those. And then of course, moving our midterm focus into connecting to operational systems to create an informative twin and, and that predictive twin. In terms of workflows and personas, Audit as Tandem will really be focused on that digital handover workflow, that specify, capture, verify step that I talked about really targeting our AEC personas quite a bit with a little bit of the owner at the beginning and end. Again, that's really about understanding the requirements and then making sure we're delivering those requirements. As we move forward, you'll see additional offerings come out. Mark's going to talk about how we're going to connect BIM 360 Ops into this solution. That really comes into Tandem Pro, where we start to have some IoT connectivity and, and some uh, maintenance management and, and other maintenance uh, and, and uh, operational systems integration. All of this is built on something we refer to as the Tandem platform, which is built on Autodesk Forge, which is the Autodesk cloud platform. Uh, we do have a beta in place today and we have a community. So I would encourage anyone who is interested to join the community. The community, we do do monthly webinars. There are discussion forums for taking questions, for discussing features, for roadmap items, things like that. And then uh, access to the beta program is available through the community. And so encourage anyone who's interested to uh, join the beta, join the community. And um, purpose here, of course, is uh, to help us help you at the end of the day. Uh, software is not built in a vacuum. It's built by folks like me uh, in close, close collaboration with customers. And, and that's how it's built best. So I encourage you to join. Mark, with that, I'll hand it over to you. All right. Great job. Um, Bob, there's some questions. If you want to answer some of them, uh, be glad for you to do that. So. Uh, so as you saw there, uh, I actually work on Bob's team now. Very uh, honored to do that. Very excited to do that. As a lot of you on the on the call know, I'm really excited about facilities operations. And so we did ask a couple of questions about, you know, do do current contracts specify facility management data needs requirements? And you know, sixty one percent said sometimes. Twenty nine percent said or. Uh, said no. So how are we going to know how to deliver or what to deliver for tandem for the operational readiness of, of that facility is we've got to start looking at, at specifying what is needed to operate. And then we also asked another question is, is facility management consulted or operations consultant or consulted before asset data on what asset data they need to maintain? Again, there's between sometimes and no, there's a 75%. You know, that's something that we've got to look at educating further on down the road and, 
in helping because as we start to do the operations of a facility, you know, we need to really look at what happens at turnover and understand what is happening and what they need for turnover. You know, that's been my focus for, for the last couple of years is understanding what need is needed at turnover, you know, and also I take a technician's approach, people that are working in these facilities and having something in their hand that they can work with that has the data that is going to be connected to tandem to use that tandem forge database with all this aggregated data. But then we can start working tickets. We can be looking at the IoT, the building sensors, and then putting our indoor maps on those capabilities as well. So that as a whole, with and Bob mentioned Tandem Pro there, we can really start looking at that building potential even before that building is finished and being allowing the people who are going to be operating that building access to the building with their mobile devices to understand how it's going to need how maintenance is going to need to be do, be done so as as we integrate you know we can attach the photos have the videos have the attached laser scans connected to the tandem platform and then with our mobile app we can actually talk to our devices and create the tickets create the documentation and truly give a unique experience out in the field. You know, right now, Ops brings in the automation system alerts. When the set points go into fault, we capture what the automation system does well and then auto generate those work orders. No programming required, just bringing the data in and auto generating that work order for the maintenance team. You know, and then looking at all this from reactive tickets, preventive maintenance tickets, inspections. You know, we do all kinds of inspections in our facilities, but are they really tied together? And so with Tandem, you know, we're going to be able to tie that asset maintenance with maybe the, the environment of care rounding in a hospital or, you know, the, that move management in a, uh, in a space management tool or even a capital planning. We can look and see how our facilities are being used and if they're being used in the mo in the, the best way. Our inspections, we're going to be able to do that in integrating with our maps. You know, in all of this right here, granted, you as, as you all know, I'm I've been focused on facilities maintenance, but think about being able to access a history of a room, of a space of an area, of a department, you know, looking at the checklist of your inspections of each one of those rooms, of the maintenance that's been all that rooms in a hot in a platform that's completely tied together from an operational standpoint. And then having all the photos, videos, models tied back on the Forge, Tandem Forge platform, accessible, easy to use, at their fingertips on a mobile device while they're working in the field. And then have live reporting, not just static charts, but graphs and reports, you know, documents right there that you can set up, that you can use like ops right now. A lot of people don't know this. We have over 25,000 pre-configured charts, graphs, reports that's in there if you set up the system the way it is. So what we're truly trying to bring is a value to the owner. And this is with Tandem, Tandem Pro, Grim 360 Ops, is so that an owner can truly begin operations on day one. We're, we're smarter in the field. We're making better decisions in the field as we're operating, as we're starting this building up, which is going to make the technicians do a, 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 create a better job, create a better workflow. The occupants of the building, you know, that is a, that's a large dollar figure. If we can satisfy those occupants of the building by better maintaining a building, because we have more connected data now, that's going to make the building operate more efficiently. And then also it, my passion, greater insight to the maintenance and the asset performance with our connectivity, with the IOT, with the streaming data in the future, 
you know, being able to wayfind in these facilities, being able to look at mobile assets, you're being able to look at tickets in a different way. We can, we can look at them for analytics or we can look at them by tracking and monitoring progress. You know, with the mapping that we're gonna be incorporating with, with Tandem Pro, with, with Ops there, that's going to be to create a, another element for a facility to understand how to manage that facility. And so what we're gonna do now is show you this real quick and then open up for some questions. So on our mapping, we if we come in here and start looking at our nearby. So here we can understand where our tickets are in the facilities on each floor. So our technician is gaining better insight to what his, their workflow needs to be. You know, we can actually, uh, you know, look at nearby assets as well. And with these, with a geolocated model, and then the tools that, that we are going to be releasing, you know, in today's world, hand sanitizer locate station locations are critical, right? We've got to keep those filled. Here's where all the hand sanitizer stations are located. So, you know, if we want to see, you know, we, we can, so somebody mentioned QR codes. We're going to be able to use the QR codes from tandem that come from the model and actually look to see where devices are. That's where I had it nearby. If I come in here to my asset module, then I can actually scan this QR code and it's going to pull up everything that I have tied to that QR code, including this air handling unit right here, which is tied to the 3D model. It's tied to the barcodes QR codes. And granted, I've got my camera on. Things run a little slower when I have my camera on. But we, we in, in the facility management side, we're giving the model for context. We're not making that technician become a BIM expert, but we're giving them enough data to kind of see what's going on around that asset. That's why we've made the maps. We can actually go see exactly where this is. So giving them more efficient data to understand their job better. Now we can also look at our, our tickets we can actually come in here and look at the checklist of these tickets. And I can see right there that the check, the unit made unusual noise. I can actually come in here and look at this strange noise. It's actually got a picture right here. And there is the follow-up ticket to work on the noise. All right here on my mobile device. And then what I can also do from this air handling unit right here is you know, I can actually open up the, the operations and maintenance manuals. It's updating here. So I can open up, you know, the automation system, look at the automation system, change the set points if I need to. This is what Bob talked about, connecting all the data, understanding, you know, the, the O&Ms, all the data right here. And then also being able to to use the, the Autodesk docs, the BIM 360, the, the Forge platform to truly connect all the data together and understand what is going on here. Here I'm opening a Revit model of a mechanical unit. So here we are on that. And you know, understanding all of this data tied together for operational readiness and just making better decisions about our building. Oh, one of the things we can also do, you know, we've got all the, the maintenance manuals here. We can also go look at BIM 360 assets and look at how it was commissioned versus how, how it's operating. So right here, we're able to see all of the data about the asset in ops, which is connected to the tandem platform. And then we can, uh, then we can go and check the operational readiness with the asset as well. So that's, that's what I wanted to kind of show and talk about is how we're tying ops, the operational readiness, you know, all the way back to this. Uh, here with locations, you know, we can actually scan the location and there's my QR code and I just unplugged my iPad, got it caught right there. 
Ah, oh, come on, Mark. There we go. And then I can actually open a live automation system. There's all my tickets. And then opening the live automation system for my sensors here at my house and being able to see that my sensor's down. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we can do now, plus more in the future as, as we sync with Tandem, as we combine with Tandem. You know, I am on the Tandem team now and truly looking to use data in a, in a different way to understand the building as we move forward. And it's, that's what excites me about Tandem right now is we're truly giving a different way uh, to look at data, understand data, and move data. So, Bob, you know, I'm excited about this. When, when I came to Autodesk, started looking at this, this process, it really excited me from, you know, working with facilities, you know, my background is healthcare, working all over the United States. I really saw the potential for this. It really excites me what we're doing. And the industry's been talking about starting with the end in mind for many, many years. And trying to make that actually happen is, is an exciting mission. Um, there's a couple of questions that I, I, I think answering live might be good. Um, Mark, this one I, I think is you, which is, Anything specific for annual turnarounds, plan maintenance to collect and schedule items and tasks for turnarounds and create a plan, sometimes for a third party? Yes, yeah, so BIN 360 Ops offers uh, preventive maintenance schedules. We can do schedules for assets, you know, air handling unit, quarterly, yearly, monthly, daily. We can also set up room inspections, uh, envir environment of care inspections. We can also do uh, uh, you know, restroom cleaning type analysis. It's set up ever how you want it. And, and also your procedures that you need, you can set that up inside of our system as well. Thanks, Mark. There's another one here that I, I think is, it, it chose to answer live because it's a really good question. As an owner, what should we have in our contracts with development partners to ensure descriptive twins are created and provided a turnover for use? or for future ownership use? And that is a very, very good question. Um, I, I would love to, to give you a concrete answer. I, I think this is a conversation in the industry right now, but it really does start with having a BEM execution plan that is understood between the owner and his project team. And that BEM execution plan should codify the outcomes you're trying to achieve, your asset types, your data requirements for those asset types, getting that codified so that it, a platform like Tandem can be used to capture that information and, and turned over, I think is, is where it starts. Um, you know, one thing that, that I have talked about with uh, Tim Kelly, uh, product manager that works for me as well, is, is being able to actually take one of those facility templates and, and generate a PDF that documents all of those requirements and potentially include that in a contract. And that's something you may see in, in future web map in Tandem. Yeah, and what we did with Arkansas Children's is we actually wrote, we worked with the facilities team. We wrote a fifth or no, 76 page data spec on, on a, nothing but facilities documents, including parameters for each asset type. And then we also specified who was to collect what data as part of that spec. And that, that worked really well. So, and, and Mark, an, another question uh, in terms of QR codes, does Ops generate those today? We do not generate the QR codes, no. We, so I think we that actually use the, the QR codes from construction and, and keep those right working on as part of the process. And that's, I think, what our approach will be with Tandem as well, by the way, is to take the QR codes that are created in construction. All those assets are typically tagged and we'll bring that that QR code forward into, into the yeah. environment and, and then accessible to ops. And that and that's exactly what I'm working on showing in, in our demo for the future. We're about a week away from a new demo being for ops. Uh, so Bruce is asking about 2D documents. Um, so with, with us being on the Forge platform, you can't, we'll be able to link back to the, those documents, have those documents. 
Ops, we do allow storing of the PDFs in our plan section. You can also store them in the, the room locations. You can also store them in the at assets if you want, it's just like the O&M documents or, or you know, any, any type of checklist. You can add those PDFs in three or four different locations inside of Ops. Thanks. And then there's another one about creating custom parameters to track data on non-typical equipment like special process line equipment, industrial facilities. Absolutely. That is really the intent of Tandem's parameter sets and the ability to define them yourself. You can define a parameter set for anything you want and you can composite them. So you can have uh, an electric motor parameter set that you use on many different asset types and couple that with a pump or a blower or any other things and, and they composite together really nicely. So that is, they're very flexible in that way. So uh, let's see. So uh, we got a kit, kitchen equipment is what I'm most concerned with about getting QR codes. So if, if they come with QR codes, we can actually use those QR codes in our system. You know, if they're, if they're read by the devices, so, or there are, there are uh, types of QR code generators online. There's, e there's some great software that I've used as well to generate QR codes, works really well. It all depends on the process and setup. And, and I'm gonna go back to Scott's question for a minute, which was Scott really asked about, you know, do you really start with the design model? How do you augment that with construction models? Can you just start with the construction model? It's a great question. You know, ideally we start with that design model and then augment. The challenge in Revit, as all of you are aware, is that you may have a design intent representation. You may have a completely different uh, fabrication specification and model. And how those two things are bound together is a, is a complex problem. That the, you know, we are in discussions with the Revit team about how to tackle this. It's, it's not just my team working on that problem, it's the Revit team as well. So right now, this is a challenge in tandem. Uh, you can start with the construction model or you can start with the design model. Aligning those two models to know that this asset is the same in those two models is a challenge today. And that is an industry challenge and, and a tooling problem that is deeper than tandem, but it is something we are actively working on at Autodesk. Um, so the, uh, the question about post-disaster resilience, that's, that's interesting because, um, and I'm just going to talk here, this, this, but being able to, in the event of a fire, you know, with tandem and what being able to light up, you know, the, the flow switches, the alarm panels, you know, shutting down the fire dampers, you know, closing the emergency exit doors, you know, segregating that fire areas, closing off that smoke compartment, you know, and it, you know shedding the dampers on the ducts. So that, that is as post-disaster resilience, being able to show that up and then light that up in, the, in, the, in tandem, you know, that's, that's down the road, but that's kind of what we want to be able to see with the streaming, with the the IOT slide that Bob showed. That's what I'm can I've been looking at talking with 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 Katie, my manager, on where can we go with this as post disaster or in the in the event of a um, oh a, a a live you know a, 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 a oh what's correct like like a shooter event, being able to see what doors we need to close off you know, all about, about these automation systems that we're gonna be connecting and turning that live data and making an emergency response. That's the word, emergency response and having that to be able to use like that. These are some of the concepts that I'm gonna be throwing out there to Bob and his tandem team of, hey, what, what can we do with this to make a totally, totally, you know, uh, a total way of looking at the building other than just operations and, and maintenance. Of course, the, the further you move up that stack, right, to controlling things with a twin, the more security concerns kick in. So there's a lot of security concerns as we move up that stack, right? If you're suddenly locking emergency doors from the twin, you want to make sure that only the right personnel 
can have access to that functionality. So, you know, be as we progress, we need to be really conscious of security and, and make sure we, we are 100% secure environment, which That's kind of just builds very secure cloud platforms. We have, uh, you know, very rigid security practices, but this is a huge concern for owners, obviously, and, and making sure they're highly secure is very important. Looks like we may have time for one more question if you guys want to grab one that's in there. If we didn't get to them all, I think there might be. Just taking a look. Okay, there's a great question here on the, the tool looks good, but this is predicated on having a Revit model. Does this imply having to create as built Revit models for existing buildings? Uh, if there's no decent information, much of the model information will be unknown or a guess. How does TNM or 360 deal with this lack of information? Can it tag and indicate unknown and more data needed? So um, we're definitely focused right now on, on, on Greenfield and, and existing assets. Uh, my previous slides and, and conversations, I also have kind of brownfield or existing uh, conditions capture. And, and I think Tandem can support those workflows as well, you know, either through um, in the future direct point cloud integration. Uh, we have some very cool at Autodesk and in the market for point cloud to uh, 3D model type of, of workflows. And, and I think that's um, a great way to kind of capture existing facility information, but it will very much be, uh, what are my requirements? Capture that information incrementally over time, make sure you're tagging that data. It's that, again, bespoke data collection exercise for an existing facility. That, that is a challenge. But I, I think Tandem as a, as a tool will definitely support those workflows as we go forward. All right, that takes us to the top of the hour. Um, Bob, Mark, again, thank you. Did you have any final kind of comments, statements uh, just to kind of wrap up? I really appreciate everyone who joined us today and taking the time to spend with us. Yeah, thanks everyone. Really appreciate the time. Uh, Mark, thank you. Uh, appreciate the invite and, and the opportunity on the way to, to come and present to this audience. Awesome. Absolutely. So I look forward to uh, what is next. Great. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.